G'day and welcome back to my workbench. Now the Stingray, it's been three years since I reviewed this kit. I mean, I was so excited to get hold of it, but I knew I wouldn't build it for a while. Well, the while has come and look, it's finished. No, it's not finished. That's just a dry fit, no glue. Snapped together at the front, required a bit of a rubber band at the, um, at the rear there, so the impeller didn't fall out. The Stingray fits together beautifully. I mean, I always thought it would, it was um, nicely moulded. It's not going to require much sanding or puttying to get that looking good. That's not the major issue. Now, if you have a look side on at these windows, right? Now, here's a pick. If you see the actual photos of the studio model and the side on shot I took of this kit, you'll notice my windows are just way too high. They're way too tall. It's um, you know, it's completely loses all proportions. That line, that windowsill line, should be halfway between the top and the bottom, which means it's about two to three millimeters out. So, how do you get the windowsill up if you want to do that? Now, the problem is all these window frames, right? These little pillars here. Well, in the photos, they're all an angle. In fact, what it should look like is that. Right, I've just put a bit of Tamiya tape on there to raise the sill line and I've added some Tamiya tape strips to show where those um, pillars should be. They should be like that. If I could get to that, it just starts to look so much nicer. It gives it a more racy feel. It's closer to the um, to basically the studio models and uh, that would be great. But how do you do that when you've got three angles of curves. I mean it curves around this way and it curves over that way and it curves around that way. Uh, trying to somehow get that taller and well it proved to be a bit of a headache but I did come up with a solution. Want to know how I did it? <laughs> Alright hang in there. Roll the music. <laughs> Alright so my aim is to get windows that are not quite as tall and this bit of tape that I put on here it just adds a couple of millimeters and it gets close at least it looks a lot better but you can't just do it with tape in fact if you had a look at the box art you can see here how the windows are nowhere near as tall so again they're about halfway between the base to the top ledge there which is how they should be except the kit they've made them much lower there's also portholes here that should go in this thing here is fanciful and completely wrong. I'm going to remove that. That'll, uh, that'll just get cut off and I'll use it, but reshape it, bring it down. I'll be filling in that hole because I'm not going to use the stupid big searchlight that's on this. Right, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, the one for the, in the real model, the real model, the one in the studio model of the pretend TV show, right? <laughs> it's all pretend, science fiction, it's all made up. But I'm just trying to get it close to the studio model. I want it to look like the Stingray I remember as a kid. So I'll be making my own little radar thing, be a lot smaller and in scale, and I'll make this little thing here, that whatever it's supposed to be. It's just a nothing thing. It's almost like it's a top part of a conning tower type thing, but I don't know, it's just made up. I'll be changing that. So, how do we do it? Well, I had a few ideas, I had a few ideas. First I thought, well, what we could do is um, we could make sort of a curve piece and if we stuck that on and bent it round as it clamped it in a place, uh, maybe, just maybe, you know, that went on through there and curved around sort of bending to here and it proved too tricky. You could certainly raise along here, but then again, you'd be going sort of too wide and yeah, it's, it's, it just, it wouldn't work. It's a lot of messing around calculating angles that won't work. You could raise these window cells here. They're fairly easy. It's a little straight line. And you could probably get away with about that much of that one. Just add a little bit of stock plastic in there. You'd raise it up. And that's easy enough to do. I mean, I'd be cutting out these ones anyway. So really, it's just a matter of putting a great big long strip in there and then putting new pillars. Okay, that could be done. But then you've got this thing here, which is just so tricky to do. And even in the box art, you can see it should sort of be flush and then it can come up to there, whereas theirs is sort of sticking out so far. So problem, problem, problems. So I thought about this and thought about this and agonised and thought, well, what I could do is, if you actually have a look at the kit part, so I'll just demolish this. This simply comes apart, right? Inside here, 
if you've seen the kit review you'd know this but this part here is literally the same as that so I thought well maybe the solution would be like we do with canopy masking for airplanes you know often your whole canopy is see-through but you're going to basically just mask out where your windows are paint the whole thing you know the color that you want it then you peel off your masking and bingo bongo all your windows magically appear but all the rest of it is painted out oh I thought well there's an idea and then I looked at what I have to do here and that's not level there's a curve again in that so if I was going to completely decapitate this and then try to somehow get the oh you could do it but it's going to be a nightmare and if anything goes wrong well there's very few of these kits around to go and get a replacement and the only one I could find was going to cost me a 99 pounds in the UK plus postage so it would have worked out at least twice what I'd already paid for this one and I didn't really want to spend that much money to buy another one so I had to come up with a solution that was doable not going to wreck the kit was the sort of thing I could test as I go and it wouldn't cause major damage so if I changed my mind I could keep going I mean if I cut the top off that there's no coming back you can't or you could try and glue it back on but it, you know it'd be just too tricky I'll take these fins off because they they keep flopping over and getting out of the way so how do you do it so I had a little nap Bess and Kat and I went down had a little nap and a bit of sleep and I realized, look, you've kind of got the basic shape. It's not too bad. The whole of the thing is not far removed from what it should be, you know? And everything's close. I mean, there probably should be, this should be a bit more rounded here, but you could fix that. You could sand that out, put it up, give that more of a rounded tip there. And there's a few little things, and I, um, I take that off. Yeah, okay. Okay, these little pillars can be cut out and put diagonals in. Yeah, okay. Can I live with the windows being too tall? I mean, I'm going to put an interior in this, maybe. Maybe that's a good idea, show more of the interior, but that looks so much nicer than that. And that's the trouble. You know, I got to this point where it's just stuck in my mind. I want that. And then I had that nap and I woke up with revelation. And it hit me in the head. Horseshoe. Uh, no, a horseshoe didn't hit me in the head. But what you need here is once you have the pillars out, what you need is a horseshoe to go in there, right? If you had a horseshoe of some stock star in you would raise that an exact width i'd be perfectly flat so you wouldn't have to worry about trying to work out you know make sure everything was level and all the rest of it so in would go that horseshoe and then you'd make it oversized it's like a little bit too wide on the inside a little bit too out on the outside and then you could simply sand to the profile of the kit you got the kit there and you could just basically trim and sand until it all gets nice and smooth and then you put your um, glass in clipper and all your windows will be shorter. Brilliant. And not only that, there actually is a pinstripe line there. So the join that you're going to make, even if that join is slightly visible, it's going to be hidden by this pinstripe. You see, there's a pinstripe. So that'll be just below, like you're raising your windows up a little bit. Right in the middle of this pinstripe is where the join is going to be for my horseshoe that's glued on. So that will be hidden nicely and covered up by the, you know, the work of the pinstripe. So that's what I'm going to do. I mean, I'd also consider looking at 3D printed part, um, building up sort of a form around here and filling with resin. I mean, I thought of everything. I thought of all the craziest ideas under the sun, but all of them were far too complicated, far too difficult. So let's just make a horseshoe and that will solve the problem. I began by cutting out those horrible straight up and down windows. Someone said they look like from there over a patio. It's ridiculous. And uh, that's pretty straightforward. I didn't cut them too close to the edge because you always tidy up again with a knife. If you cut sort of and you slip with the, um, the nippers, well, that's pretty hard to come back from. There's filling and sanding involved. So they were slowly and very carefully trimmed out so I didn't wreck the existing profile. And then I gently sanded until the whole thing was nice and level. Bit of sanding, bit of scraping, it's pretty good, pretty good. There's still some tiny telltale bumps where the pillars were before, but that's okay because that's where I'll be joining my other pillars at the top. It was easier to sand this part flat. Basically, I could put this on the workbench, push down hard. It was pretty hard to work with this wobbly bit at the top here. So those lumps and bumps are going to be basically where I'm going to put the pillars anyway, but they'll be just diagonally slanted back. 
Now, putting this in here, well, this is where we make the horseshoe. I need a bit of stock plastic, right, a bit of styrene. This is just evergreen stock, two millimeters thick, and that will go in there, okay? It need to be cut to my horseshoe shape. Now, one thing I'm going to have to do is see how these windows are round at the back here. That is correct, at least I got that right. In fact, all the windows should have a slightly curved or a little rounded end on them. They didn't have that. It was just straight up and down. But we'll fix all that. But for the moment, to get this in here and all the way back, I'm going to have to cut into here. So that's a bit of a surgery that, you know, you sort of hoped you wouldn't have to do, but there you go. So I'll have to cut into that so that I can get that. Um, so easy as that. I'll do it this way. So that would now go in and be perfectly flush. So I'll cut the one out the other side and file them, make sure they're both correct. And then I'll show you how we make the shape, the horseshoe shape, to fit here. I started out by removing that uh, stupid sort of <laughs> conning tower thing there. It's way too tall and it's also in the wrong position. So that was fairly easy to cut out. Very carefully using the actual shape of the top of that cabin as my former, I rested the uh, little blade there and you know just gently cut through, taking my time. This is a job you don't want to rush because you can, you can go awful real fast. So there we go. And finally, it should cut through. There we go. That's the part. I'll save that for later. I will use it. It'll be slightly sanded down to fit and pushed further back. And it's just a matter of trimming off all the excess here, giving the thing a really, really good sand. And there you go. That is now perfectly smooth. And that's going to be a good basis for what I will do later. Now begins the horseshoe. Yeah, this is a thing to get your head around because you've got to sort of, well, you've got to make it big and you've got to make it like a cactus, as I kept calling it to my friend, the duck. I'm going to make a cactus first. So I need to get that shape. And the only way to figure out that shape is I'll need to tape this little rectangle in so it doesn't slide around while I take all my measurements. And on the inside, very easy, just follow the bouncing ball. On the outside, you've got to follow the profile, which means you've got to angle sort of correctly, but then you can get the shape. So there she is, and I've allowed a little bit of excess for sanding because this thing's diagonal in <laughs> a number of directions. You're going to need a bit of waste to play with. Now, what I do to get it cut to that weird shape is I simply cut off little triangles. And being plastic, it's pretretty easy to snap. Yeah, it's two millimeter of plastic snaps fairly easily. So scoring those and breaking them off, slowly working my way in triangles. Now some of the ones at the end, I'll use some nippers and they will help me lift that off. And there you go, that's the shape. It's not too bad, that will fit. Just a matter now of gluing that in, making sure that it sits just a little bit out all the way around, because you don't want any sort of gaps or holes, then you're gonna have to fill those. So. Easy as that, in she goes. So just checking, yep, that is fine. And I've got a little spacer here I've been using. This is actually a sanding block, because a Kitty Hawk sanding block. And it is perfect, it's eight millimeters tall, so it's great for protecting that top piece and making sure I don't break it. Now I'm going to add quite a bit of glue here on the inside, all the contactor cement, because I want a really solid bond. I want this thing to be left overnight. And there you go, that's it. It's now the next day and that has glued down really firmly and I also started on that one side. As you can see I've worked to the profile there and I have sanded it back, sanded it back and got that angle. So that's working really well. I've got the other side to do now so let's see how we do that. Again I use this spacer, that's worked really well. I am protecting the body because I did slip before and I went, oh dear, I need to get some tape down because if I slip with the sanding or the knife when I'm cutting, yeah, you don't want to wreck that beautiful body. So now it's just a process of very carefully using the braid resting against the profile there, so the top and the bottom section of the cabin, I scrape away the plastic and try and get it, pare it down and get it close. Once I'm nearly there, just a matter of a light sand and the sanding blocks, again, I've got two of these, <laughs> they, um, they are really good for uh, getting that nice and smooth and leveling out the whole thing. Now the front here is probably the hardest bit because you've really got quite an angle. So you've got to be very careful and work very slowly and make sure you don't cut a big hole in that top part of the cabin. Just be patient, a little bit of time, nerves of steel, try not to wreck it. So um, you can get there in the end, you just gotta be careful and don't slip. 
Well, I've successfully accomplished that. That has done exactly what I wanted. We have raised that ledge. We now have windows that are much sleeker. I've just got to put those diagonal sort of pillars in, but we'll do that later. I don't want to put them now. I'll probably snap them off. You notice I've also removed this little top piece here, which I have here I've kept. And I'm going to reduce that in height and then set it. It should be a little bit further back. So it'll actually cover that hole. So it'll actually go about there. So I'm going to save that piece. That'll be used. But at the moment, that's nice and smooth. That's good. Okay, and as you saw, yeah, you've really got to cover up and protect because you can slip. And I have slipped with a knife a few times, so thank goodness for that. Now comes a tricky part that I'm not super confident about, but it's part of the process. I've got to hollow this out. And it can't be a straight hole in because remember our profile here is at an angle. So before I had to make things a little bit too wide and then sort of cut them back into profile. Okay, because of this profile goes in. All right. Here, I'd be careful not to drill straight down because actually I've got to drill again in at that sort of V profile. So this is going to be tricky. So here we go. Let's see if I can accomplish this. Now the reason, I've got to cut this out, if you're thinking, why bother Harry, that's working fine, that's good. Yeah, you probably could do that if I could cut my glass piece down. That's the problem, see? The glass piece, right, the clear piece, goes in there. So unless I'm going to do some major surgery on that and try and somehow cut it down to size and shove it in there. I mean, you could if you're very good and you've got some sort of saw or laser and you can actually cut that to the height that you need and then you can slide it over the top, you've got that solved. But you don't have much room for an interior then. It's going to be very hard to build now. But I want that open to A, build an interior and two, I need to push my clear part in. So let's accomplish that. Here we go. It's the next day. I've um, let everything set. I mean, I have broken this little fine edge here so many times. It is, it is so fragile. It's um, but really known how difficult this task was. I don't know if I'd actually gone ahead with it, but anyhow, it's done. I carved out the hole inside, filed and shaped and scraped and sanded it, and uh, the profile works. The uh, canopy, for want of a better word, fits snugly in there. As snugly as it ever did and uh, that's given a much shallower look to those uh, windows and that's all I was trying to achieve so there's that next thing I need to do is to get the slanted pillars in and I've already started measuring where they should be and 
that wasn't as easy as you'd think. I uh, I went off models, studio models. I tried to use photos from the TV series and things I could find, and everything's different. And most of the shots you'll get if you try and get stuff from the TV series are at an angle, so you know you're dealing with that sort of thing. I mean, in theory, the proportions should be correct, but you're still dealing with perspectives and angles, and you know cameras with wide-angle lenses and distortions, that sort of thing. Best thing I could find was um, Jerry Anderson actually holding uh, the uh, Stingray, there's a bit of a photo here that I don't really have the rights for, but I've cut a little bit out just to show you that's what I've actually kind of based everything on because I did all these calculations and working out and basically scaling up to the size that I have. And this is what I'm going to do. There's um, 34 in the front, 34 millimeters from the very front edge of the glass to the beginning of this first pillar, which will go that way diagonally. And then the pillars are going to be three millimeters each. I've decided to go equidistant with the spacing between the pillars. So they'll be 30 millimeters between each of the spaces. And then the trailing part here will be about 24, 25. What I do need to do is just round this out a bit. Now, this is where things get a bit weird because they have big models, medium sized models and small models for the show. And guess what? They're all different. They're all slightly different in their layout. And you know, obviously it's just a matter of how the model went, what they were doing. Also things like this here, it is fairly sharp in the big models. When you get out of the smaller models, there's a pronounced sort of curve in there. So I'm just gonna do a bit of subtle one. I'll, I'll round that a bit, just so that it doesn't come down like a knife edge, right? As it is at the moment, I'll round it. But the thing is, it is, an imaginary craft <laughs> and look if you look at people's drawings and other things online and other people's models it gets very confusing because everyone's desired to do their own thing and nobody has done the same so really all we're trying to do here is make it look like a stingray so that i believe is a better height for the windows i'll put my slants in at the spacing that i've worked out and that's how it's going to be <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to live with that so i start with this little corner and that was fairly easy file that out making sure you're pushing upward all the time because you don't want to go down against that ledge because the ledge has got to remain flat so they went hard to do got both those done now i'm going to use 0.5 millimeter stock which that fits originally the ledges were 0.1 millimeter but with all my sanding and profiling and everything i've got them down to a nice fine 0.5 now as i said before i've made all these measurements and i know where the pillars should be so i'm now using my caliper to do that now it's a straight line measurement so just straight across it um, doesn't go around the front so marking those in there's the first pillar and second pillar this is um, sort of vernier caliper thing they're really handy really handy because it's so hard to hold a rule there and try and get all these things sort of happening so getting as close as I can, I mean, obviously the pencil is going to be within, you know, 0.2 of a mil, if that. There are all three. One, two, three. That's it. Those I know are eight millimeters tall, and that's basically consistent all the way through. But what I need is that slant. So there's my eight millimeter strip I'm going to do. The slant I worked out was 16 to 10. That was the size of the triangle. So double that, 32, and along the bottom we'll do 20, and that will give us the same ratio. So that's how I worked it out from looking at all the photos and sort of looking at drawings and things. So there we go, that is the angle of those slants. That is my 16 to 10 or 32 to 20 angle. So just a matter of making a few parallel lines and then I can work out where my strips are going to go. The strips are three millimeters wide on the horizontal. So I'm not worried about the actual thickness diagonally. I'm worried about that horizontal because that's how I worked it out from all the drawings and all the photos. So just a matter of doing that, I can pretty well eyeball it. You know, I've sort of done so many of these things, it just comes naturally and I just do them. And anyway, I can always tidy this up with a little bit of sanding later, but I've pretty well got these right. Now I'm sorry about the wobble. I haven't set up the new hobby room completely yet and I really need to put the camera on something apart from the desk so that when I'm pushing on the desk, it doesn't wobble the camera. So we'll fix that in the next video. Anyway, those little pieces, I can finally cut them out. I mean, it's fiddly stuff, but if you're careful and you take your time, this stuff usually works. 
dry fit over the canopy. I'll push that on the inside. So I've got something to rest them against. So I want to see, do they fit? They did require a little bit of trimming, but they do fit and that is going to work perfectly. Okay, the trick now is I'm going to need something like that canopy to hold them in place, but I can't use a canopy because I can't get glue all over that. So I realized I could stick some of this painter's tape on the inside and then I could do exactly the same thing. I can pop these in and they will actually sit in place. And they won't move because that is sticky tape. Yeah. So a little bit of feeling, a little bit of moving around, get them in the exact spot. They're not moving and it's going to be very easy now to add some glue. Yep. A bit of Tamiya Thin to start with. I did end up using Contacta as well later on because I want a really solid bond. Now one thing I was worried about with all this gluing is that would the painter's tape, when I pulled it back, rip them out? But no, it didn't. And there they are. I was very careful. Now I need to put those portholes in. There's two little portholes down here. So to work out where they are, they sit either side of that front pillar and they sit in like the bottom third of that whole sort of space below the pillars. So you can reference it off photos of the model and that's where they go. Now depending which of the three scale models they used in the TV series, because they had a big one, a middle size one, a small one, they all have different ratio porthole sizes. So I just went with the one that sort of pleased me and these are about a two and a half, three millimeter hole. And for me, that worked. That gave me a nice balance and there you go. That's how it ended up. That's the whole effect, that side. And I've uh, put in the glass there so you can see how it looks now. And the portholes, and I've just tacked the tiny bit on the top there, that little, whatever it is, craziness thing. And pushing that back a bit, that looks better. Slanted windows, heaps better. Everything looks better. I mean, the narrower window um, depth, it, it just looks, it looks like a stingray now. That's what I wanted. That's how it should look. So there you go. I accomplished everything I set out to do in this video. It was very fiddly and I don't know if I'd do it again. <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those things where it starts out like a great idea and then you really wonder why you want to do it and then you're too far in so you commit it. But I got a result. So there you go. So if you like this video then hit that like button please. Please. I need the algorithm to get kicked along. And by all means, comment, just be respectful. You can subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification, all those sort of things. If you really like the sort of stuff I'm doing, want to help me out, hit that super thanks. That um, will give me an instant shekel or two. That is fabulous, all right? And there's always YouTube members and Patreon members as well. You can join there and put a subscription in, and that is very, very welcome. All right, that's it for now. So there you go. Anything can happen in the next half hour. Well, this is what happened. This is what happened. So stand by for action for the next episode. So that's it for now. It's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Udini.